Now this morning we have an invited guest who is sitting with me, Victoria, or Vicky Galinsky. Good morning. Good morning. And Vicky is a local musician. And at some point you might want to give your, your website so people can see what kind of musical work you do. But you're not here this morning because of your music per se, although that is a creative part of your life. You are here this morning because you have some interest in presenting uh, an artifact and a photograph and some history. And we're going to see what kind of information comes out of this. And I will provide my information and you give me a little bit of background so the audience can see what are we talking about here. Because I see on the table we have a crystal. Right. That's our first thing. Now, everybody has seen a crystal. They're very popular. Everybody talks about crystals in the, quote, New Age movement. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at our office, uh, we use some very highly specialized crystal devices. Uh, they are actually devices that uh, in some w uh, uses are cleared by FDA for the treatment of people. Um, unusual things connected to electrical hookups and they do all kinds of weird things. Crystals are uh, able to generate force fields. But a crystal can also be a focusing device for information. It can retain information from its immediate environment or from its past environment. It can be heavily influenced by the person that holds it, uses it, and, and works with it. So, Vicki, tell us something <coughs> about this one sitting on the table. Okay. <clears throat> This crystal was given to me by a woman in Seattle, Washington, and the year was 1993. This woman was my neighbor, and she saw me in the parking lot, and she said, I know who you are. You were my sister in a past life. Her name was Kika, and she said that her grandmother, whose name was Gukum, told her that she would cross paths with me someday and to give me this crystal. My immediate response is that I assumed that the crystal was an arrowhead from a past life because Kika was Indian and I assumed that I was Indian and I just assumed it came from South America. I, I'm not a psychic and I have no idea what the crystal was, but I guarded it with my life because I knew it was very important to me. When someone gives me a crystal as a gift, I know it's very important. When I hold the crystal up to the full moon, to the, uh, and I illuminate it with the light of the full moon, I can see inside the crystal a doorway that leads to outer space. And that's what I see when I look through the crystal. And one night, in Tucson, Arizona, I held the crystal up to a brilliant full moon, and what I s looked like I saw was this giant, giant green snake coming through the interdimensional doorway, and that's what I thought I saw. So I want to make sure that you guys can see the crystal, and if you can see the doorway that I see, I'm going to let Peter Moscow um, take over from here. Okay, that's a fascinating background story. And obviously the, the key for me is number one, the woman uh, sensed a connection yeah. with you, which I do accept. Um, there is something about that connection that goes back a long time. It's a very long time. It's about 40,000 years that the connection to her goes back. Now this places it possibly in the arena of the, either the Atlantic or possibly into the Pacific because you have two major mythical civilizations, both of which predate the, the dawn of contemporary history as we know it. So you've either got Lemuria or Atlantis, but maybe that's irrelevant. The connection with her, I think, is the more relevant issue. The crystal itself, I believe, is about 10,000 years old, and I think that it is fashioned 
by, I think that the, the reason that you have the crystal has to do with somebody who I see as a, a male, a bald male going back about 10,000 years and who was in, and this may have been with the, the last era of the Atlantean civilization. I think that it certainly was an old one and he was very capable of thought, uh, imagery and so forth and this was fashioned by some kind of larger ritual or experiment that was done and this is just a small chip of it. It was, it was taken off or it was, it was almost accidentally produced and when she focused on this a lot of information came through for you and what you see in there is <coughs> representational and remember that the doorway is always <coughs> excuse me in consciousness the doorway is mostly in in those times was the result of very active consciousness and uh, an escalation of awareness that very few people have at the moment although we're beginning to climb back to it so exploring consciousness was the very big thing at that time so we can look at that as there, there's definitely some truth in this it's a little different from my perspective but nonetheless it binds you and her to an ancient past and that I think was very important so we'll in the next segment of course we'll take a little bit of a look and you can give me your feedback on this and see what you think but the crystal has personal value and it has actually promoted within you uh, an enormous amount of searching and seeking and if it did nothing else that would be enough but it did more than that it's allowed you to explore other domains that you might not have looked at so we'll come back in a few minutes on exploring the unknown with Vicky Galinsky and the crystal and a very interesting yearbook from a school 